Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have back with us Morgan Lloyd with Trailstone Insurance Group, and we're going to be talking about tips for landlords for short-term rentals. Morgan, welcome back to the program. Thanks, Mike. Really appreciate you. You're welcome. And I know this is such an interesting topic because it's unique and it's hot because Airbnb and short-term rentals and those kind that whole genre of you know real estate and um, brings with it unique insurance needs. So let's just dive right in. Um, wh- when did like the whole short-term rental thing begin? Did it begin with Airbnb? Well, I mean, really, we've had Airbnb. You know, we've had BNBs for a long, long time, but. Um, yeah, it's really taken off with Airbnb and Vietnam. they kind of brought it to national, you know, prominence, you know, because, you know, yeah, bed and breakfast, you know, yeah, that's uh that's been around forever and a day, but now it's kind of like, oh, well, this is now how to, you know, how people can how, mainstream, I guess is the phrase I'm looking for. Yeah, it's it's just like, you know, it's just like Uber in terms of people you have this car yeah. that's sitting in your driveway, or maybe you have some free time. Um, and and now go use it and turn it into some cash flow. And the same now with your house, you know, if you're if you have, if you're going to leave for a few months and you've got a house in Denver, you know, if you want to, why not rent it out and make some cash flow? Or maybe you've got yeah. some space in your basement, you know, convert it into a mother-in-law suite, rent it out, and, and make some serious money. Yeah. Um, and then also, you know, if you're a landlord with a, a property, you know, you want to get some more return on that property. You're currently renting it long term, and you decide, hey, I want to try to, you know, double my my revenue from that property. You know, you can do short-term rentals and really make pretty good money if you're in the right place and, and doing, doing it the right way. Yeah. But so it's important to have the coverage. A hundred percent. And it's, and it's so much different than just like me and my family live in our house and we have homeowners insurance coverage check. It's great coverage check, but now this is a whole different nuance. So talk a little bit about now, what is the differences that people need to be aware of when you're thinking about short-term rentals? Because like you said, you might go, oh, I'm a snowbird. I'm going to go to Florida for the winter here and leave our home in Colorado. So let's do Airbnbs. Well, now you, you're you not really you know a landlord per se, but now you kind of dip your toe in that water, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the first thing to, to note is that if your policy, many, many insurance policies, homeowners policies will exclude short-term rentals specifically. So to exclude liability, you could potentially have issues where you don't even have coverage for the, the home itself. So mm. you want to, uh, the liability is a huge concern. Um, you want to make sure that you at least are permitted to use by your insurance, permitted to do what you're doing. Um, even though obviously it's your own home, you want to make sure that they're allowing you to, they're covering you for these activities. Otherwise they could just cancel on you if they find out. And that would be very, very bad for you. Uh, having a cancellation on your insurance is, well, is pretty disastrous. Yeah. Let's, let's even kind of dive in there. What, what if that happened? Like, what if someone is like, ah, I never, th-, you know, like you rent a car and you flip the keys to your friend and say, you can drive it and they wreck it. And, oh, you weren't an authorized driver. You, you, sometimes you just don't think about things. So maybe in this case of we live in Colorado, we're going to go to Florida for two months. Let's Airbnb for two months. Cool. It's my house. I can do what I want. And I'm not written it out for years on end. So I'm not a landlord in your mind, but that could trigger some issues. So if something came up, like who would ever know that? Well, maybe what would happen is if there was some damage and you had to make a claim and you just go through the claims process and the adjuster then is going, oh, well, now we discovered this. Is that kind of the path that it would go down? It could. Thankfully, I haven't seen it happen to any of my clients or haven't heard too many stories about it. But yeah, it would be, uh, it's it's not a good situation. You want to make sure that everything that you do, that's revolving risks around your home, any kind of business, any home-based business, including Airbnb, it, the insurance is aware of it and that you have the appropriate coverages in place for it. Um, yeah. It, yeah, it's definitely not just Airbnb, Airbnb, any kind of business where you have um, people coming to and from your home for business purposes. Yeah. That's a whole new can of worms. You want to make sure that you know, and it's different coverages because like you might, um, you know, years ago, my wife was teaching piano lessons and it's like, well, what if someone tripped on the sidewalk and hurt themselves? And now that might be over and above a typical homeowner's policy. We need to now talk umbrella. So things like this with a short term rental concept, what are some of the things that people need to keep in mind other than just, ooh, now let's check in our homeowners. So you, you need to, number one, call your homeowner's agent and say, 
is this okay? If it's not, then what? Yeah, even if even if they say it's okay, even if they say they have a, uh, if you're with a company like, and I probably shouldn't name companies, maybe it's okay. Yeah. American Family, for example, you know, I was looking at their uh, their their policies, and they have a home sharing endorsement that you can, you know, you can ostensibly you could share your home, but it's not really set up for Airbnb. Mm. So it's only for a certain number of days per year, and after that, you know, you're not really allowed to be renting out your house more than that now. I could a whole another thing, or you know, if you're with another company that may have limits on the amount of income that they're willing to reimburse in the event of a loss. So if you have your basement set up like a mother-in-law suite, so it's kind of a duplex, um, and you're renting that out, and you have a pretty standard amount of income from your short-term rentals, but um, you know the house burns down or you have some kind of damage, smoke, whatever, you can't get into that house for a few months. You know, you get some of that income back, but not all of it because of yeah. the, the limits on the policy. Yeah. And every single insurance carrier is different. I'd say probably uh, raw numbers, maybe half of, of major insurance companies allow, have some kind of short um, home sharing endorsement. Some completely exclude it. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the, but that's a big start. percentage that don't. Oh yeah. yeah <laughs> you know, you think about, you know, oh, half do, but yeah, half don't. Yeah. Yeah. So, and you got to have the endorsement pretty much every carrier. So yeah. you, you got to let them know or because otherwise you're one violation thing, of contract. Yeah. Violation of contract, violation of your homeowners. If you got canceled, there's a cascading domino effect of things that could happen negatively for getting other coverage. So cost or hassle, whatever, but there even could be a claim. Like what if someone that you're letting live in your home for X number of time, days, weeks, whatever, you know, what if they damage something and you need to make a claim? Well, then just that damage could be not covered. So there's, there's monetary uh, hits that you need to be aware of, right? Yeah. It's absolutely important to know, even, even with a dwelling policy, even if you're allowed to have renters, it's important to understand that, uh, mm-hmm. that vandalism by your tenants is typically excluded. Yeah. So, so whether you're a homeowner or a landlord, you know, there's there like a landlord, you, you already have in your mind, oh, I own this property. I rent it out for years on end, or now, oh, now I'm going to do some short term. They already know I need to have different kinds of policies, but why should landlords be careful about renting their home, you know, with, or outside of Airbnb, Verbo, those kind of things? Yeah. So this kind of gets into the, the, the meat of the issue here. So if you're, Running short term, you don't have necessarily all the, you're not doing all the background checks and credit checks and, and right. things like that for your tenants. So obviously you should be careful about who you allow into your house as a tenant on short term or long term. But if we're talking about short term, you're not doing all those checks. And with Airbnb, maybe you have some type of reputation score or something like that, but you don't necessarily know, you don't know the person that's coming into your house and you may be sharing the house with them and they may be um, any, any type of person. So, um, there are certain coverages out there, as I said a minute ago, about the exclusions for um, tenant vandalism. There are insurance companies out there that are, are specifically designing policies for Airbnb and short-term rentals. Hmm. Um, for example, Proper CBiz, uh, Proper and CBiz, these two companies uh, that we work with at Trailstone. And they have policies that specifically do cover um, tenant vandalism and they cover bed bugs and loss of business income from those kinds of, of risks. So that's really nice. The, that's the upside of that is, you know, you have those coverages that could be very relevant to an Airbnb operate business operation. However, there's some downsides to their policies as well, at least from what I see in Colorado. They're, you know, they, they do cover homeowner. They're the same as homeowner's policy in terms of having coverage for the dwelling and all the other uh, coverages, sewer, water backup, all those things. But they are much more expensive. They're, you know, it's typical to see them almost twice as expensive compared to the best rates with other carriers. And they have very high wind and hail deductibles. Mm. It's a big problem here in Colorado. So there's not really the perfect product necessarily for an Airbnb, but that is something to think about if you have a lot of income um, from a from a short-term rental and you want to cover it and you're worried about that, um, both the you know, potential loss of business income and these other kind of risks, tenants that come into your house that could do a ton of damage. Um, you know. It's it's not a bad idea to at least look at it, you know, and talk with somebody who, uh, to preferably an independent agent. Most likely, you're going to have to work with an independent agent for something like this, um, and just yeah, get some really in depth information about your own your own risk, and just kind of evaluate it person by person. The other option that I'd say most of my clients go with is, um, you know, something like Travelers or 
occasionally Safeco. So those are typical homeowners policies that don't necessarily have all the bells and whistles of, of those other coverages, but um, they provide really good homeowners coverages. And in the case of, of travelers, provide pretty good, uh, pretty robust loss of rents coverage for short-term rentals. So, yeah, you, you know, it uh, makes me think we've got a friend uh, here in town that um, they do some Airbnb rental and they just, it's not like, Oh, we're leaving town. So you can have the house for a week or two. They just have a, a room down the hall that they let people come in and live there and they have common areas and oh, the TV room we'll share the kitchen. We'll share. It's not even separate. Entry. It's just like, come on in. So the, the, all of these things almost become almost like a hybrid need because it's one thing to go, I'm a landlord. I need, you know, uh, insurance for this kind of thing, or I'm a snowbird. I'm leaving for a month or two and I need insurance for that. But this is someone that, you know, they're living right alongside you. Is that even a different layer of need for insurance? It could potentially be a different, you know, liability exposure. And it's important to really have the details nailed down with your insurance policy, make sure everything's accurate. Um, but yeah, you can't kind of you can't separate the two. You've got both the the home that you need to protect, and also your liability exposure. Yeah, and you know we talked about you talked, mentioned an umbrella. That's highly recommendable if you're if you're not going with a commercial type policy. You know, one of these kind of homeowners slash commercial policies like uh, like proper CBOs. Um, you, it's definitely a very very good idea to have a, a personal umbrella with your on you know with your homeowner insurance yeah, as well. For sure. Just to, just to fill in the gaps. So when, when someone is um, reaching out to you and ask and, and asking for, you know, Hey, what should I do? You know, I need homeowner's coverage or, and I'm sure that's one of the questions you guys ask, but if someone is calling you specifically to say, we're considering, or we're getting ready to do short-term rentals and we're a, you know, just a, traditional homeowner or we're a landlord, what are some of the key points that you're always watching for to bring up to make sure that they are asking or being aware of? So yeah, if you're just getting started out, typically if somebody's just getting started out, I don't worry too much about the the business income exposure. Um, there still is that risk of the the bed bugs and the and the vandalism. But for most of those kind of kind of clients are probably better off just starting out with something like travelers, um, just a typical homeowner's policy with the endorsement if they don't have, and that's totally up to them. Some people like when they're starting out to have that robust liability coverage and the, you know, the vandalism coverage, especially if you're going to be far away, you don't have an eye on the, on the clients. You're just having a property manager look at it. You want to be able to have, you know, younger people maybe staying at your house or staying at your property. Then maybe you do want to go with someone like proper, um, one of these um, specialty Airbnb type coverages. But if you're, you know, you're going to be there, you want to make sure that you're worried about hail, you're worried about those kind of things. You don't have a lot of savings built up yet. Um, you know, you don't really want to self-insure your roof. Um, then you're probably better off going with something like travelers. You know, it's, it's really, you got to weigh all these factors. Um, and that's why it's really an, uh, a tailored individual type approach. It's just really yeah. letting the client know about at least what coverage, what options they have and what coverages they could have. Unfortunately, there's no perfect product. I wish there was, at least in Colorado. Um, you really either have to kind of self-insure your roof at this point and, you know, or, or pay a ton of money for some type of commercial policy may be available, but it's even more than even more than proper and see does. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just, it basically the bottom line is you better know what your options are and then have someone to help you understand the options and then the best choices to make, because, you know, you just don't know. And, and, and you're not going to get it answered with a quick Google search. Probably not. No, it's, it's one of these, it's a really tough situation. I wish there were better products in terms of, um, you know, but, but, but there's a lot of optionality. At least we do have, you know, even at Trailstone, we probably have 10 different, at least 10 different companies that we can, we can place clients with. Yeah. So for this kind of risk. So, and that's another benefit of being independent, like what you are. It's if someone is talking with you, you don't have your blinders on only talking about this one set of products. You've got, you can freely listen to what they need and then go from your, you know, list of approved companies go, oh, well, this one might work here. Let's. And so I think that that's another thing that people don't realize is you hear this name or that name and you go to them. It's like, ah, oh, it didn't work out. Well, it could become frustrating. So having that flexibility is huge that you provide. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, uh, 
uh, when it, with this kind of thing, you you have to go. With an, you almost have to go with an independent agent. But you you could go. There are some company some captives out there that that do this as well. But um, like I said, you need to watch out for the terms. Um, you know, if if you're only allowed to have people stay at your house thirty days out of the year. Um, for, on their home sharing endorsement, and you wanted to actually run it as a business, that's probably not going to work out for you. Um, and then with some carriers, some of the big ones, you can't even do short term rentals on their dwelling policies, mm-hmm. so on their landlord policies. So you need to, any, anybody who's doing short term rentals needs to get a hold of their agent and ask very specific questions about whether or not this activity is covered based on the amount of income they're getting, the amount of you know, the amount frequency. of frequency, yeah, the frequency, the, mm-hmm. and then it's also important just to try to mitigate the risk of having a tenant that's going to destroy your house. Um, you just do not want to be in that situation of having a claim in the first place. Be careful about who you allow into your house. Don't think that yeah. Airbnb's necessarily got your back in this situation. Even if you're going with Airbnb, um, you just hear nightmares of people, you know, having their house destroyed by really terrible tenants. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, they think that they'll be covered by Airbnb and Airbnb can be very difficult to deal with. So, you know, and your homeowner's insurance, you know, might not, they, you know, they might consider Airbnb to be primary. And so it's, you know, you might have, it might be a fight. Sides. Yeah. Like, like yeah. a ac- car accident. Like, well, no, we're going to sue this one. No, they're going to sue. Well, your home, your, your policy might be thinking Airbnb is responsible and Airbnb is going, Nope. And so now you didn't have the right kind of policy. And on the front end, if you had just checked it out and made sure that all the boxes were checked, then you can confidently know that, okay, I'm going to be under 30 days, over 30 days, or run it as business, not frequency, just check the boxes. So, Wrap us up here, Morgan, with what's the best way someone could maybe some final points. If you, if you want to make one more point or, or two more that we left out, that might be a golden nugget of knowledge. But uh, what's the best way someone could reach out and learn a little bit more about making sure they're fully uh, protected with uh, dealing with short term rentals? Yeah, there's a lot of resources online here in Colorado. Um, there's some really good Facebook groups that have that's very active. Colorado Airbnb uh, group, you can search on Facebook. Um, there's people posting every single day about the, all aspects of the business. I'm pretty active on there about talking about insurance. Um, that's, that's a great resource. Um, really, I just, you know, look at your policy and, and ask your agent about it. Um, feel free to reach out to me. It's something I do. I, I deal with these on a multiple of these every single week. Um, even if you, you know, have multiple policy exposures, even in the mountains, things like that, that can be kind of hard to insure if you're in a fire risk area and you still need coverage. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. And just kind of, you know, get a hold of me at, you know, my, my number is 720-902-5818, or you can email me at uh, mloyd at trailstoneinsurance.com. It's the easiest way and we can set up a time to talk. It can take a little, little while. Those conversations can be a little bit more extensive because we're talking a lot about the business uh, on top of the home and all the other exposures. But but yeah, leave no stone luck. unturned. Make sure you're protected. <laughs> yeah. And be, you know, be cautious. Like I said, that's the biggest thing. Be cautious about who you yeah. into your house. Um, there's all kinds of, all kinds of risks associated with it. And um, just make sure that you're careful about it. Make sure they're highly rated ideally. And, and you know, make sure you're allowing decent people into your house is, is probably the number one thing is to yeah. prevent, prevent rather than try to try to cure and to make sure your insurance is set up correctly, obviously. Yep, exactly. Well, it was really good learning about these. You just, you hear all about stuff and you hear the nice, bright, shiny things like, oh, hey, and then you got to make sure you're protected and covered. So thanks so much for your insights there, Morgan. I appreciate you coming on today. Yeah, thanks, Mike. I really appreciate you. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.